Welcome to the fascinating world of clam worms. These intriguing creatures, also known as ragworms, are a common sight in coastal areas around the globe. They belong to a group called polychaetes, which are a type of segmented worm. Clam worms are particularly abundant in intertidal zones, those dynamic areas between high and low tide marks. These zones are challenging environments, subject to constant changes in water levels, temperature and salinity. However, clam worms have evolved remarkable adaptations that allow them to thrive in these dynamic habitats. Imagine yourself strolling along a sandy beach at low tide. As you walk, you might notice small mounds of sand or tiny holes scattered across the surface. These are telltale signs of clam worm burrows. These burrows provide shelter from predators and harsh environmental conditions. Clam worms are masters of burrowing using their muscular bodies and bristle-like structures called setae to navigate navigate through the sediment. Clam worms are not only fascinating for their ability to survive in challenging environments, but they also play a crucial role in marine ecosystems. They are an important link in the food chain, serving as both predator and prey. Their burrowing activities help to oxygenate the sediment, benefiting other organisms that live within these habitats. In the following sections, we will delve deeper into the anatomy, behavior, and ecological significance of these incredible creatures. Clam worms, like other segmented worms, possess a remarkable body plan that is perfectly suited to their lifestyle. These fascinating creatures are a part of the polychaete class, which includes many marine worms known for their bristly appendages and segmented bodies. Their bodies are divided into numerous segments, each with its own set of muscles, nerves and appendages. This segmentation is a key feature that allows them to move with such precision and flexibility. This segmentation allows for flexibility and coordinated movement. Each segment can move independently, which is crucial for navigating through the complex underwater environment they inhabit. The body of a clam worm can be broadly divided into three main regions, the head, the trunk and the tail. Each of these regions has specialized structures and functions that contribute to the worm's overall survival and efficiency. Let's start with the head, or prostomium. This region is packed with sensory organs and feeding apparatus that are essential for the worm's interaction with its environment. This is the business end of the clam worm, housing its sensory organs and feeding apparatus. The head is equipped with eyes, antennae, and other sensory structures that help the worm detect changes in its surroundings. The most prominent feature of the head is a pair of sensory appendages called palps. These palps are highly specialized and play a crucial role in the worm's ability to sense its environment. These palps are highly sensitive to touch, taste, and smell, helping the worm navigate its surroundings and detect potential prey. They act like the worm's antennae, constantly probing the environment for food and danger. The trunk is the longest part of the body, consisting of numerous repeating segments. Each segment is a near replica of the others, containing muscles, nerves and appendages that work in unison. Each segment bears a pair of fleshy appendages called parapodia. These parapodia are not just for show, they are vital for the worm's movement and interaction with its environment. These parapodia are essential for locomotion, acting like tiny paddles to propel the worm through the water or sediment. They also help the worm anchor itself in place when needed. Each parapodium is equipped with bundles of stiff bristles called setae, which provide traction and help the worm grip the substrate. These setae are like tiny hooks that give the worm extra stability. The rhythmic movement of the parapodia and setae allows the clam worm to crawl, burrow, and even swim with surprising agility. This coordinated movement is a marvel of evolutionary engineering. The tail, or pygidium, is the final segment of the clam worm's body. Though it may seem less complex than the other regions, it serves important functions. It is relatively simple in structure, containing the anus and sometimes a pair of sensory appendages called cirri. These cirri can help the worm sense its immediate surroundings. The pygidium plays a role in excretion and can also be used for sensory perception. This final segment completes the clam worm's anatomy, making it a highly efficient and adaptable creature in its underwater world. Clam worms may seem simple at first glance, but they possess a surprisingly sophisticated suite of sensory organs that allow them to navigate their environment and detect both prey and predators. 
These sensory adaptations are crucial for their survival in the often harsh and competitive marine ecosystem. In addition to their sensitive palps, which are used for touch, taste and smell, clamworms also have several other sensory structures. These palps are highly specialized and can detect minute chemical changes in the water, helping the worm locate food sources and avoid harmful substances. On their head, they have two pairs of small, simple eyes called the celli. These ocelli are not capable of forming detailed images like human eyes, but they are incredibly sensitive to changes in light intensity. These eyes cannot form images like our own, but they are sensitive to light and shadow allowing the worm to detect changes in light levels. This ability to sense light and dark is particularly useful for avoiding predators and finding optimal conditions for feeding and burrowing. This is particularly important for a creature that spends much of its life buried in sand or mud. The ability to detect light changes helps the clamworm determine when it is safe to emerge from its burrow or when it should remain hidden. Along the sides of their body, clamworms have numerous sensory receptors that are sensitive to touch, vibration and chemicals in the water. These receptors are distributed along the length of the worm's body, providing a comprehensive sensory map of their surroundings. These receptors help the worm detect nearby movements, potentially signalling the presence of prey or predators. The ability to sense vibrations in the water is particularly important for detecting the approach of larger animals that might pose a threat. Clamworms are highly mobile creatures capable of moving through their environment with surprising speed and agility. Their movement is not just limited to crawling, they can also swim and burrow with remarkable efficiency. Their locomotion is primarily achieved through the coordinated movement of their parapodia and setae. The parapodia are paired, paddle-like appendages that extend from each segment of the worm's body, while the setae are tiny, bristle-like structures that provide grip and traction. When burrowing, the worm contracts its muscles in a wave-like motion using its parapodia and setae to grip the sediment and pull itself forward. This method of locomotion allows the worm to move efficiently through the substrate, creating burrows where it can hide from predators and hunt for food. When swimming, the worm flattens its body and uses its parapodia like tiny paddles to propel itself through the water. This swimming motion is less about speed and more about maneuverability, allowing the worm to navigate through complex underwater environments. The setae on the parapodia spread out, increasing the surface area and providing greater thrust. This adaptation is particularly useful when the worm needs to make quick, agile movements to capture prey or evade predators. While clamworms are not the most graceful of swimmers, they are capable of short bursts of speed when pursuing prey or escaping from predators. These bursts of speed are often enough to outmaneuver slower moving threats and secure a meal or safety. Clamworms are opportunistic feeders, meaning they will consume a variety of food items depending on what is available. This adaptability allows them to thrive in diverse environments, from shallow coastal waters to deeper oceanic regions. Their diet consists primarily of small invertebrates, algae and detritus. Small invertebrates, such as tiny crustaceans and mollusks, provide a rich source of protein, while algae offer essential nutrients and energy. Detritus, which is decaying organic matter, is also a significant part of their diet. This includes decomposing plant material and animal remains, which are abundant on the ocean floor. One of the most remarkable features of the clamworm is its irreversible pharynx. This unique adaptation allows the worm to extend its throat outwards, effectively increasing its reach when hunting for food. This is a muscular tube located in the worm's throat that can be rapidly extended outwards to capture prey. The pharynx can be shot out with great speed and precision, making it an effective tool for securing food. The pharynx is armed with a pair of sharp jaws that can grasp and tear food items. These jaws are strong and capable of breaking down tough materials, ensuring the worm can handle a variety of prey. When a clamworm detects potential prey, it uses its sensory organs to pinpoint the exact location of the target. These sensory organs are highly sensitive to vibrations and chemical signals in the water. It will rapidly extend its pharynx, launching it towards the prey with remarkable speed. This swift action minimizes the chance of the prey escaping. Seizing the prey with its jaws, the clamworm ensures a firm grip. The jaws then work to tear the prey into manageable pieces. 
The pharynx is then retracted, pulling the food into the worm's mouth. This retraction is a coordinated movement that brings the captured prey directly into the digestive tract. The food then travels down the esophagus, a muscular tube that connects the mouth to the stomach. The esophagus plays a crucial role in moving food efficiently towards the stomach. The esophagus is lined with muscles that contract rhythmically to push the food along. This process, known as peristalsis, ensures that the food reaches the stomach without any blockages. The stomach is a sac-like organ where chemical digestion begins. Here the food is mixed with digestive enzymes that start breaking it down into simpler molecules. Digestive enzymes are secreted into the stomach, breaking down the food into smaller molecules. These enzymes are specialized proteins that catalyze the breakdown of complex food substances. The partially digested food then moves into the intestine where further digestion and absorption of nutrients take place. The intestine is a long coiled tube that runs the length of the worm's body. The inner surface of the intestine is lined with tiny finger-like projections called villi. These villi increase the surface area of the intestine, allowing for more efficient absorption of nutrients. The intestine is a long coiled tube that runs the length of the worm's body. This extensive length provides ample space for the absorption of nutrients. The inner surface of the intestine is lined with tiny finger-like projections called villi. These villi increase the surface area of the intestine, allowing for more efficient absorption of nutrients. These villi increase the surface area of the intestine, allowing for more efficient absorption of nutrients. The nutrients absorbed are then transported to various parts of the worm's body to be used for energy, growth and repair. The undigested food waste is then eliminated through the anus, located at the tip of the worm's tail. This process ensures that the worm's digestive system remains clear and functional. The anus is the final part of the digestive system, where waste is expelled from the body. This efficient system of feeding and digestion allows the clam worm to thrive in its underwater habitat.